Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. Business Matters is HCAM's show focusing not only on businesses in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage these businesses. Today, uh, we're happy to have Ted Twinney with us, who is the owner, proprietor, what's the title? Uh, Co-founder. Co-founder yeah. of Startline uh, uh, br Brewing. Brewing. Yeah. Uh, Brand new to Hopkinton, right. well, although it's not so new anymore, is it? Yeah, well, I guess we're in our uh, ninth month now. So, Oh, good yeah, for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ted, before we talk about uh, Startline, sure. um, we, we like to get a sense of people's backgrounds. Yeah. Um, you, pr you ha probably haven't been in the, in, the, in the brewing business for that long. What did you do prior to that? What's your background? Great. Well, uh, first off, thanks for having me today. It's, oh, a, you it's a pleasure to, to be here in the support of HCAM and Hopkinton for our brewery has just been excellent. So uh, it's a pleasure to come and talk a little bit. So my background, um, I'm originally from Michigan. I raised my family in the Midwest, uh, lived in Pittsburgh for a number of years, working for GlaxoSmithKline, a consumer packaged goods company. So I was in the over-the-counter division. I sold uh, Sensonite toothpaste, Tumzan acids, a, a really terrific brand portfolio. Managed a large sales force for them all around the country. Oh, okay. And uh, really uh, traveled quite a bit. Uh, built some really deep customer relationships with large retailers and local smaller retailers. Um, and just worked with a lot of vendors and developed a lot of team and, and, and business around the country for almost 30 years. How about the education part? Well, I tell you, I went to Indiana University. Uh, we're, my, most of my family's from Michigan and all went to Michigan. I flew oh, the boy. nest, if you will. I went down to Indiana University. I uh, loved it. It was great. Uh, coached a bike team down there. They have a little 500 bike race uh, that uh, was modeled after the Indy 500 and uh, had a wonderful time. Studied business, uh, economics and, and business uh, minor uh, and uh, really enjoyed my time in, in Bloomington and was fortunate to start with Beecham products right out of college. So I, I was uh, in a rare situation to, to work with one company throughout uh, a, almost a 30-year career before I retired early and started our new venture here in Hopkinton. All right, get the motivation for the new venture then. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, I fell in love with craft beer in the, in the 1990s, uh, doing all that traveling. I'd, I'd visit some of the new craft breweries that were popping up, and, and like so many of our, our customers, uh, really fell in love with the, the, the chase of finding what's new and fresh and learning about what's happening in the craft space. Uh, so I had my eye on it for a number of decades. Um, and like many people who uh, are fortunate to have corporate jobs, also have some entrepreneurial spirit, wanted to uh, want to do their own thing. Uh, fortunately, my, my life kind of uh, got to a situation where I could retire early. We were empty nesters, with my kids off to college, and it was the right time. So. I had a couple different business models I was considering for my last kind of big uh, corporate or professional push in life. And uh, the craft brewery came to the top. Uh, got really serious about it in early 2015 and uh, uh, rallied the troops and family and friends and uh, wrote the business plan. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll get into more of the story, but uh, it, it really it was, it was just a, a great match of, of being able to run our own business, create and do something fun, uh, really bring to uh, the business some of my background in sales and marketing, uh, okay. um, and, uh, and do all of those things together to, to start a new company. And I want to talk, uh, you know, before we're through about this, the marketing aspect of, sure. of your business, because uh, <clears throat> it appears to me there's some competition out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this transition, the plan, um, creating that, what, what, how long did that take you? Well, we, we had uh, a loose plan for uh, at least 18 months and then uh, really got into some, some deep financial planning and consultation with some other breweries, uh, uh, really line item pro forma work in our business plan, uh, started looking for uh, our business partners relative to a lease for a place to operate. Um, and one of our anchors and why we're here in Hopkinton is Water Fresh Farm. Uh, and our partnership growing hops together hydroponically. We're one of the only uh, breweries that, well, many breweries grow their own hops, but uh, to our knowledge, we're the only brewery that has hydroponic hop growth uh, attached to its brewery. Really? So uh, a real point of difference. And uh, with our friends at Water Fresh Farm, um, and that was the beginning of our relationship there. And then we decided to, to actually uh, uh, locate the brewery at Water Fresh Farm as we continued to talk about the, the business plan. Um, so we... Um, 
really spent a good 18 months building that business plan and then build out started in the uh, spring of 16 um, and uh, got open November of 16 and here we are uh, nine months into it and uh, things are going terrific. Uh, in, the, in the planning process, how important um, uh, was demographics? Very important. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a competitive space, um, although I would tell you that a uh, number of breweries is, shouldn't be confused with volume or, or the rate of sales. Uh, okay. uh, there's over 5,000 breweries now in the United States. Um, we're, we're fortunate to operate with a farmer's brewer's license which is part of the jobs creation bill in the state of Massachusetts, uh, which has allowed us to, as a farmer, growing our own hops and using other local products like Hopkinton honey, uh, the, from the hop raw guys here in town yeah, that yeah. Uh, are, are, Great. are using uh, honey in, our, in one of our beers. Um, anyway, the, the opportunity, I think, to, uh, to operate with that license and to uh, manufacture our own beer, distribute our own beer to, to customers, bars, restaurants, retail stores, uh, as well as operate a tap room in our space uh, was a unique combination of business uh, revenue streams that, that's allowing us to be successful. So when you look at the competition, uh, many of these breweries do some of those things, some do all of them, um, some only do one of those things, um, you know, make the beer or, or have a brew pub, for example. Um, that said, I, I think when you look at the number of breweries in the country or even here in the state, Consumer uh, behavior is changing. People are falling in love with craft beer. Uh, mm. the, the tap rooms are turning into a gathering place for the local community. Um, and just like rest, great restaurants, uh, folks are looking for, um, you know, a, a terrific local uh, genuine place to um, spend their hard-earned money to enjoy a little entertainment and time with friends and family. Yeah, interesting. It's, uh, it's to me, the, the one of the more challenging aspects of your business has got to be the the, the competition. Yeah. Uh, and, and how one distinguish how, how you distinguish yourself from sure. that competition. Sure. It's got to be a major well, task. You can do that in a number of different ways. Uh, we've chosen to um, really just be very genuine in, in their in our local establishment, and uh, we've been fortunate with Water Fresh Farm to uh, to have a great uh, starting point for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. connection with the community here but uh, you know Metro West I uh, frankly uh, was living on the south shore of, of Massachusetts uh, from Boston um, for a good five years before it right at the time we were considering doing this and uh, I wasn't that familiar with the Metro West area and mm. I've, I've grown to love it I'm a resident now so really uh, yeah we've moved out and, and uh, live here in Hopkinton now which is great the family is located here uh, property owners and so um, We've fallen in love with it, the, the, the community, whether, you know, there's so many groups, uh, running groups, uh, hop, you know, social groups, uh, professional organizations that are connecting with our brewery and supporting us, not just here in Hopkinton, but the neighboring communities, the, the different chambers of commerce. Uh, uh, we have people that travel in from, you know, many of the towns that you'd, you'd sus suspect around Hopkinton uh, that, that come by and visit and enjoy our beer really? or carry out beer. So. Um, we, we feel like uh, we're in a great, great geographic uh, location, demographic location as well. And while there's a number of breweries, uh, the beer market's quite large. Uh, even <laughs> if all of us uh, kind of made all the beer we could, I think we'd, we'd still be fine um, in terms of competition and, and the amount of uh, uh, beer that is uh, purchased you know, annually by uh, all these consumers. Can you give us, uh, without uh, divulging any uh Secrets. Sure. Can you give us an idea of um, the economic investment that you've made uh, in Hopkinton? Sure. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, well, I'll kind of go back to the first book I read about this, and uh, uh -huh. you, you know, Google and everybody that has search engines and information that's out there, it's not too hard to kind of get to what it might cost us to start something like this, and and that answer is in the range of you know three to five hundred thousand dollars typically to to get going. Now there's a number of variables and how big you make your, your space, what your property looks like, whether you own the property or lease the property, those types of things. But uh, um, the, one of the first, first things I, I, I looked at and when we were considering our own brewery uh, was you know, a half million dollar uh, investment. And I can tell you we're well beyond that now. Um, but um, that, that was kind of the, the first look that we had at uh, trying to get the uh, the right equipment and the right location and the right branding and support for staff and so forth in what's place. In, what's, what's included 
It's just not hardware. Right, right. Although that's what people see most and first and right. foremost, right? You come in and you see all these, you know, large fermentation tanks and a brew house and um, kegs and things like that. So there's a lot of equipment. Um, there's a lot of build-out costs, right? So there's a, a, a tremendous number of systems. You know, we have uh, glycol systems, refrigeration systems. We have gas running so that we can carbonate beer, um, water, uh, heat. Um, so there's a number of processes and systems. There's a large cost there. Obviously, you have your traditional overheads and, and, and uh, acquiring a great staff. And, and again, we wouldn't be successful without having all these people that are helping us uh, you know, really reach our goals and delivering every day. So those are some of the traditional costs. Yeah. What kind of impact have, uh, has um, Startline had on Waterfresh? Well, I tell you, I, I think uh, what a beautiful uh, building they have and uh, a terrific clientele. Um, and by the way, if you haven't stopped in and just taken a moment on their deck to look at their greenhouse and, and see the, the lettuce and uh, some of the things you can see in the first bay of their hydroponic greenhouse, it's, uh, it's a wonderful spot. So um, their marketplace uh, was quite large right before we moved in. We took about a third of their space. Um, uh, that, that impacted their customers actually negatively at the beginning because their shopping experience changed. But as they revisited the marketplace, they understood that everything that they were looking for and that was available prior is still there. We just had moved it a, a quite a bit <coughs> and, and, and shrinking their footprint. But their, um, their business, uh, as, as they endured through us kind of putting up walls and bringing in all this equipment, which took a, a several months, um, has, has rebounded very nicely. So we have a, a real real nice thing happening now where folks are shopping um, or getting ice cream or what have you at Waterfresh mm, yeah. Farm and stopping by and picking up fresh beer to go or, or even taking a break and having a, a pint or a sample flight on, on the property. Um, Waterfresh Farm has a nice menu. You can, uh, you know, get a, a nice meal and sit down and pair that with a beer you in, can our, do in that. our space. Yes. Um, so um, their business, I, I think, is, is, uh, is, is, growing nicely as a result of us coming together and our vision all along was that we'd be pairing the food and our, our beer together as two proprietors sharing a space. Yeah. Well, competition. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the, how many, how many breweries are there in, microbreweries are there in Massachusetts? <clears throat> I believe the number is just over 100 now um, and I think there's at least 20 that are, being, are, are planning to open up this year. Um, and uh, I think when I came in, I was in the mid 80s when I started. So there's been about 20 to 30 that have opened up since we've opened another 10 or 15 that'll open up this year. Um, and and we, we actually welcome it. It's great. Um, it's unlike most professions I've, I've come in uh, contact with. Uh, folks of other breweries have been super supportive. Uh, uh, it's really a um, more of an association of brewers that work together. We're part of the Mass Brewers Guild here. Uh, in the state, and uh, we share uh, a, quite a bit of information and, and work together to market ourselves. In fact, a new brewery passport's gonna be created for the state where folks can um, kind of check in at each of the local breweries. So whether you're in Westboro or Milford or Framingham or um, Hudson um, or, or, or visiting us here in Hopkinton, there's a number of great local craft breweries right around um, this community that uh, people enjoy kind of getting out and understanding the differences and the varieties and um, and supporting the local craft. A lot of education in what you do? There is. Um, you know, I went back and got some classic textbook training, some of the science uh, behind the, the brewing itself. But it's a healthy balance of experiential hands-on training, uh, actually uh, brewing yourself. So I've been fortunate to have a, a, a few home brewers join us, although we are all commercially uh, self-trained in, in getting the beer made. And uh, fortunately, that's turned out well. and and the beer is coming out real nice. Um, but again, back to other breweries helping, you know, we, before we opened, we uh, tested some recipes at some other breweries. We uh, shadowed and were, were taught using the same equipment we have here at other breweries in New Hampshire and Delaware. So we traveled out and worked with some other breweries that uh, uh, were kind to spend a day, or, you know, here and there, uh, kind of teaching us how to use the equipment that we ultimately purchased and use today to make our beer. Do your, do your customers, Travel around and sample? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no question. The fact that, you know, as we pour beer, we'll talk about the other breweries and styles of beer. And, um, you know, folks uh, love to share their vacation stories. You know, uh, they just got back from a weekend or a vacation somewhere and they hit a couple craft breweries and 
Um, we get pictures all the time and stories from folks that are, are out doing it. I do it myself. I mean, not only for research for the industry I'm in, but I, I truly enjoy and love uh, going out and, and, and seeing these craft breweries. Uh, they're turning into, uh, you know, gathering places and parts of the community and, and uh, you know, kind of a cultural stop, you know, when you get to a town or a city. Um, so it's much more than just a traditional place to get a beer, you know, at a, at a bar or a restaurant. Talk, talk to us a little bit about this gathering place concept. Sure. You, you've mentioned it a couple of yeah. times. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, there, there's clearly something happening, um, and, and it's been going on for some time, um, where uh, folks are, are changing their behaviors. I, I mean, we, we see it every week. We're open Wednesday through Sunday at, at Water Fresh Farm, and um, whether it's, you know, uh, a group of co-workers coming after a day's work or uh, date night or singles groups you know um, uh, or just good friends you know connecting um, or, or people vacationing that were on their route we had a, you know someone going down to the Cape that was from Connecticut that wanted to stop by and see us because they were hoping to run the marathon next year and it all tied together for them so you know it, it's about um, any number of different things for folks but uh, one thing we definitely see is is uh, you know, a lot of local folks regularly coming in and, and spending a, an hour of their day, you know, every week or so uh, having a beer and just connecting with friends and family. It's a it's a casual place. It's gets a little loud when we have a bunch of people in our small space, but uh, it's comfortable. It's quiet there. You're not inundated with a, a tremendous number of TVs and and, um, it, you know, we even have people playing games in our space, battleship and playing cards sometimes just really? to, to, to sit and talk and and enjoy and we also have communal seating if you will large high top tables so it's not unusual to sit down right next to a, you know another couple folks you don't know but by the end of uh, a half hour visit you may have made a friend and met some other folks in town well the uh, I'm intrigued by um, I don't think th I don't think this answer is obvious but I'm intrigued <laughs> by uh, how you settled on the on the name sure and sure. I, I we get the Boston Marathon thing but there's right. got to be more to it than that there is um, and, and uh, interestingly, it's, uh, it's one of the first things uh, people always want to talk about is the name of the beers or the name of the brewery. And uh, believe it or not, it wasn't so obvious to us. We were kicking around a number of different uh, ideas and concepts. But uh, um, we did have the epiphany one morning as we woke up. Hey, we're in Hopkinton, uh, the, the marathon and, and uh, everything that comes with it's a large part of this community and people's connection with it. And... Uh, so we got on the, the start line name, and, and we're pleased that uh, we, s we selected that. But as, as we started, you know, considering it, it, it meant more to us than that. Uh, this is our new business, um, so it's a, start, a new start for us in a way in terms of a number of folks in my family um, and some friends that are, are partners in this. Um, this is uh, uh, our retirement business, if you will. We plan on doing this. Uh, you know, You've got a long way to go before I know, you retire, I know. pal. I know. I hear you. But uh, this is we're, we're in it for the long run. And uh, so this was the start of a new business. We, If you've seen our logo, it's a, it's a tortoise. Uh, we've kind of stolen from the literary tortoise and the hare as it relates to the race, but uh, also as a, um, you know, just a symbol of our, our new start um, in life. And uh, we're going to do it slow and easy and try to do it the right way. And then we took the liberty of turning the, the tortoise into a hop tortoise because we're growing our own hops on site. So uh, you'll see those elements of the start line, the hop tortoise, uh, and you'll also know that the tortoise is not only a kind of a racing symbol for, uh, for the marathon, but also uh, a, kind of a personal note to ourselves about starting our new business and trying to do it slow and do it right. Yeah. Will, you have, uh, will you have beers named after... Famous marathoners, for example. Well, at we'd some love point? to in time, right? We, we've made about uh, nine different beers today. Um, several of those beers have more just kind of general racing themes to them. So uh, we thought about loading and carb reloading, and we use loads of hops. So we have our hop load IPA. Uh, we have uh, a night run black IPA. Um, huh. We have, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of rituals in running. So we have our honey rituals. So we have a, a number of kind of general racing terms that are coming into our beer names. Um, we did launch, though, at marathon season last year, and it's kind of our summer seasonal beer, uh, Marathon Wheat. It's an American-style wheat beer, and uh, it's named Marathon Wheat and uh, designed specifically for the marathon celebration and throughout the summertime. So uh, as we go forward, we'd love to, to find some, some ways to connect with the running community and, and Hopkinton uh, with the names of our beers as we keep going. So stay tuned on some more names for, uh, oh, that's for exciting. that. Yeah. That's exciting. I, 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 can, 
I can make a couple of suggestions when you're ready. We'll, we'll have a chat. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, uh, you're obviously having fun. Yes. And you're now, uh, now after nine months, probably pretty quickly, achieving a level of success, which you yeah. want to grow. What's the, what's the cha where's the challenge in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, and um, great question. I, I, every day has just been a wonderful journey. I, they're long, fun, f just packed days of doing all kinds of different things. Some, some pretty uh, manual tasks, you know, um, to, uh, to, to actually spending quite a bit of time about strategy and planning for the future. Um, we, as we opened and, and then uh, opened our tap room, um, you know, there's new beers to explore. There's new customers to explore. We're in about 38 bars and restaurants today, and I think we'll wow. be in about 100 by, you know, the next six months. But we just don't want to go out overnight and open up 100 locations and not service those customers well. Right. Um, so, you know, we're trying to add a couple a week and just keep growing that. Um, we're getting a tremendous a number of phone calls from bars and restaurants that are interested in carrying our products. So uh, fortunately, um, that growth has been real nice and steady. Um, just started canning beer for the first time, so product development. So right, traditionally in our space, we, as most craft breweries start, we've been selling growlers, which yes, is the large 64-ounce yes. vessels. We have something called a crowler can, which is a 32-ounce big can of beer, and we package those right on site, right at our tap room. Um, and then just a couple of weeks ago, we started uh, canning a couple of our beers in 16-ounce four-packs. So product development, actual beers, uh, expanding sales, um, and trying our best to uh, keep up with all of that with a small expansion of staff and, and, and making sure that we service all of those elements of our business well. So yeah. pacing has got to be really good. You can Absolutely. get yourself in trouble, I would, you can. I would think, and, if you and, overextend. Yeah, and, and we, we've actually had a couple <laughs> bumps in the road. Um, you know, back to when we opened, uh, uh, just didn't make enough beer for the holiday season. We actually ran out of beer right around Christmas and New Year's. So we ended up closing for uh, well over a week so we can get caught up on making some more beer and getting back in stock. So that was one big lesson learned. Um, now we're seeing a trend every week and we know how much we, we think we can sell. And so we're staying in stock and, and that's going very well. But uh, the marathon season was another huge growth uh, oh, imagine, wave, yeah. um, which was which was terrific. And you know, we got a lot of media and support and a lot of visitors that came in. And, um, you know, it was just a really busy time. Fortunately, um, we, we could just kind of sustain that after that. So we added some more staff. So it's, it's about getting out in front of projecting the growth and structuring it appropriately with staff and supplies and, and trying to manage that as opposed to reacting to it. You know, we have, uh, those of us that have been around, uh, hopping in for a while and, and associated with the marathon in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form, um, have this idea, uh, in fact, it's reality now, uh, something we describe as Hopkins and Marathon foot, Hopkins Marathon footprint. Yeah. You've now added a, a, a whole new aspect to that. Mm. Uh, I can just, I, I can just imagine uh, the possibilities there. It'd be kind of great to, uh, fill up um, the appropriate vehicle and, and bring it down to the Marine Corps Marathon this sure. this fall, where we have a, where this community has a relationship. Yeah. So that, that th there's a global reach there. Yes. Uh, and what you're doing adds to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, love to talk to you about that opportunity. We um, we were fortunate to in our first year just do some of the things that we plan to do every year and build from there. You know, every season going forward. So. One of the first things we wanted to do was support the local community. There's a lot of folks who get a local number here. It has to do some fundraising. So yes. we hosted yes. well over six fundraisers in our, uh, in our tap room. And, and the community all helped these, these fortunate people that, that were going to go out and run to, yep. to hit their targets. And that was one big effort for us. Uh, I think, as I said, we did about six or seven of those. And we plan to do those again next year for, for the local community. Um, beyond that, we were fortunate to connect with the Spalding Rehab team and, and uh, pour some beer down at the finish line last year. Oh, really? Uh, on race day, we were down at the Mandarin Hotel, and uh, some of the, the, the race team finished. Uh, they came in and celebrated and, and had a start line beer. So we took the start line to the finish line last year. Um, beyond that, though, the Hopkinton Running Club's in every month. We have uh, a number of folks that are looking for tech shirts, which we'll be making in time. Um, 
Uh, we we want to market around the marathon and support the marathon and give back to the marathon footprint in all of this um, as, as part of a community member that uh, can help make this season so special. It, we're, we're still learning uh, as we go through the year. It's a year long event, in effect, you know, with the planning and everybody working towards it. So absolutely. So and you and I've had some private conversations on how we can connect and uh, and support some of the, the many great opportunities that uh, come out of the marathon. So um, we're, we're kind of all in on that as Startline Brewing to, to try to help uh, uh, be a good partner in that effort. Uh, and you have been. I'm sure you will continue to be. So in wrapping up. Sure. Um, Hopkinton. Yes. You, you've not only um, placed a business here, but you've now moved here. That's right. What's, what's your quick, um, your quick um, assessment of this community well, and I what attracted you to? Yeah, to I, I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this, but I, it felt more like home to me than uh, some of the other places. I've traveled quite a bit, and I, uh, the people are the first thing I would say. I, the, they're, the connection we're making with not only our customers, but neighbors and friends um, has just been outstanding. So it's a warm place from our viewpoint uh, where people have been welcoming and generous and, uh, and uh, you know, it just feels really, really more like uh, the type of people that, that we would like to, uh, you know, uh, spend a long period of our lives with in terms of putting down our new roots here. So uh, the people, obviously, there's a lot of things that Hoppington offers that brings that in, from the parks to the schools to uh, the community and history here, the race. Uh, there's so many things that I think make it, you know, kind of a fun uh, and special place to be. Uh, proximity, obviously, as well to so many other uh, locations throughout New England. Uh, there's just, the list goes on. But uh, uh, I think I've probably topically touched on a number of those things yep. that, uh, um, uh, you know, has made it special for us. Uh, obviously, the business brought us here first and foremost, though, and um, business community has been very good in helping support us as well, the Chamber of Commerce and the town and everybody we're working with. So uh, it's been a great place to do business, and uh, we're learning that it's a great place to live as well. Well, we agree. We agree, obviously. Uh, really appreciate uh, you taking the opportunity to share a little bit about your background in, in your business, in uh, and in particular, the investment that you've made in the community. Yeah. Um, we're pleased that we have a, a, a place like HCAM where we can create these kinds of programs and then share interesting facts and information about not only the businesses that are, that are successful and thriving in Hopi, but also the people who manage it. So thanks for taking the time.